Beautiful Tuesday evening at the ballpark. And welcome inside 20th and Blake, the home of Coors Field, the Colorado Rockies. As over the next three days, they'll match up with the Los Angeles Dodgers. We begin tonight telling you about a transaction the Rockies were forced to make. They didn't want to, but Dexter Fowler's hand still too sore to play. He was placed on the DL retroactive to a week ago in Boston. He is due to come off on July the 11th when the Rockies are in L.A. Edgemer Escalona was activated from the disabled list, so there'll be some help down in the bullpen with a 93 to 95 mile an hour sinker. Welcome everybody upstairs with my partner George Frazier. I'm Drew Goodman. Glad as always that you are with us. The Dodgers that are coming to town this time around do not resemble the Dodgers the Rockies saw the last time around. Yeah, they're a little different. They have a lot more bats in the lineup. The bullpen's kind of been transformed a little bit there also. But if you go back and look at where they are, they're 38-43. They've won eight, eight out of their last nine ball games. They have played very well. Now, it's amazing their average and earned run average. That's what's won in ball games for them now. Late in the bullpen has done a much better job than what they were. They're still 14th in runs scored in a ball game. The ERA still sixth. And the guy on the mound today is third best in baseball at 2.08. Well, all of the rage in Los Angeles and really throughout the game has been the first month in the big leagues of Yasiel Puig. All he's done in his first 101 at bats has produced 44 hits, seven home runs. He's six foot four, 245 pounds. George, he could flat fly. He has a big arm. The comparisons that we've heard, Bo Jackson, Vladimir Guerrero, well, special talent when I when I look at this young man play the game I always want to ask a lot of people that have watched him play the game people I respect scouts that I respect all of them tell me this is one of the best players they've seen come around even though it's a hundred at bats that they've seen in almost 20 years when you hear that kind of compliment and you think of the players that have come to the big leagues in the last 20 years it's a big compliment it is a huge compliment so the Rockies will try to get after Puig we'll talk about the National League West and how congested it is when we come back to the ballpark, Rockies and Dodgers a few minutes away.
Yankees looking to get back to 500. They're 41 and 42, just a game and a half out in the very crowded, competitive National League West. And back upstairs with George Frazier, I'm Drew Goodman. Over the next couple of weeks prior to the All-Star Game, the Rockies will play exclusively inside the NL West. The good news is they've been the best team inside the division of their four rivals. They have been, and you see Colorado where they stand in the standings right now, just a game and a half back of the Diamondbacks. But everybody is bunched together. Three and a half back, the Los Angeles Dodgers in the cellar. So as things start to jam off, you're going to look at what the Rockies are going to do for the next couple of weeks when they go out and play. They have the Dodgers here. They're they're two and one at Dodger Stadium, one and three at Chase Field, three and zero oh at Petco. Now I look at this and I say, okay, San Diego Padres aren't the same team that you played earlier. You're going to have to be on top of your game when you go there. They're playing much better baseball. The Dodgers, a different team now, so it's very important these next ten ball games, plus what you have here at home, the thirteen ball games coming up. It's a difficult stretch, and you're playing in a division, and you could really do some separation if you play well. You know, we always come back to this. I know it's only a three-game set, and then it is out on the road, as you were describing, but you got to play well at home. You have to play well at home, and the Rockies have been able to do that pretty consistently, and I think making a statement early in this game against the best left-hander in baseball will make a statement not only for this game, but for the whole series. Roy Oswalt, Clayton Kershaw, Rockies, Dodgers, Come on back to Coors Field with us. Root Sports is brought to you by your seven neighborhood Toyota stores. Toyota, let's go places. By the Courtyard, by Marriott, Western Elegance in the cultural heart of the city. By five-hour energy shots. And by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. Well, this was a nice surprise for Michael Kadair and Carlos Gonzalez. Kadair took his uh, customary spot in right field, and all the fans, 3,000 of them in right field, 3,000 in left field, uh, were given those uh, headshots that we have now up, up in the booth. And uh, you're supposed to put those in front of you, like this. Well, I, I'm not doing it because we're on camera yet, but. Uh, you can vote until 10 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, July the 4th, for Cargo, who's running second among outfielders in the National League. Michael Kadir is Travis. He's not in the top 15. Bruce bochy has got to put him in the All-Star game if he doesn't, you know, all of a sudden pick up a couple million votes. But Cargo 
you need to keep uh, stuff in the ballot box for Cargo and Kadire with uh, just two days left to vote for the All-Star game. Both are four that worthy. Joey Votto leading among first baseman. Brandon Phillips at second. Perennial All-Star David Wright at third. Troy's has a, has a huge lead. He was having an MVP year. He has a huge lead at shortstop. Carlos Beltran, Cargo, and Justin Upton, one, two, and three right now in the outfield. And Yadier Molina, rightfully so, just in front of Buster Posey. Two great catchers in the National League running one and two. Roy Oswald's first pitch is in there. Strike one on Mark Ellis. Beautiful night for baseball, and we are glad you are along with us. Nice crowd gathering here on a Tuesday for the Rockies and Dodgers. And the 91 mile an hour fastball misses away. This will be the third start for Roy. It is, and you'll see the numbers. Some of them don't look very pretty. What does? The strikeouts per innings pitched and the walks, just one. He'll make you beat him. He's the guy that's going to attack the strike zone, and he's had success against the Dodgers early out here on a fly ball in the LeMayu. DJ puts it away, and let's take a look at the Southwest batting order for the. L.A. Dodgers. Yasiel Puig coming to the plate right now, hitting 436. He's hitting his last five, seven games of at least three hits. Then Adrian Gonzalez, Hanley Ramirez, red hot. He's hitting 12 straight. Andre Ethier, Matt Kemp slides to the sixth spot. Pretty deep lineup. A.J. Ellis having another solid year. Juan Uribe and then Clayton Kershaw, who could swing the bat a little bit. So here is the prodigy, Puig. And Oswald fires inside. And that's what he'll do. He likes to work the inner half of the plate. I noticed in Tulsa starts where I saw five, uh, four of those starts, he really worked the inner half against right handers. And Quig's a guy that's so far off of the plate, you can see where his stance. That when he gets into that, that stance, he's well off of the plate. So you're naturally trying to run here, but when you run it in off the plate, it ends up being a ball. He can really handle the outside part of it. And there's a line shot, base hit to left. This kid just hits line drive after line drive, making the game look a whole lot easier than it is. The native of Cuba. And now you have to be concerned with its foot speed at first as Adrian Gonzalez will come up. The Rockies defense is brought to you by Excel Energy. We bring you the energy you need so you can live the life you want. Visit responsiblebynature.com to learn more. Colvin playing center field for the injured Fowler, Kadire, and Gonzalez out there as well. And then it's uh, LeMayhew and Rutledge up the middle. Arenado and Helton on the corners. And behind the plate is your Vittori Alba. And Adrian Gonzalez takes a strike. Tim Timmons is behind home plate. Gonzalez having a typical Gonzalez year, 296, 10 and 48. Runner going, throw to second. Got it. Great throw by Tori Alba right on the bag to erase Yasiel Puig. The second time that he's been thrown out trying to attempt to steal. Fairly good jump. Tori Alba just outstanding throw right on the money and an easy tag for Rutledge. We look at it now as that hand slides in and then the glove in top of that hand on the Mike Shaw Subaru Supermo. One one on Gonzalez and a broken looper that goes foul. Adrian will look for a new bat to swing. That one uh, no longer useful. Torrey Alba this year having one of his best years behind the plate controlling the running game. 40% now that he has been able to throw out. Which is outstanding. Well, the guy on the other side has been the best in the game this year, A.J. Ellis. Yeah, at 51.5. Here's that explosion Drew's talking about. A heavy fastball up in the strike zone just disintegrated the, the wood in the hands of Gonzalez. Roy Oswald, one of the best pitchers from 2004 2008, tied with Santana, most wins 86 and 47. Unfortunately, over that time frame, he and Sabathia, the only two still around, Santana's and Brano and Webb. 
This oh, is popped up. There. Yeah, popped up playable left side. Arenado, the only guy left on that side of the infield, makes a catch. Puig got a hit, but Tori Alba erased him. We'll see the Rockies on offense when we return. If you missed uh, our open, Dexter Fowler was placed on the disabled list with the hand injury. He is eligible to come off on July the 11th, and hopefully that's all it will take for him to return to good health. Edgemar Escalona was returned to the active roster, so the Rockies get some help down in the bullpen. And here's the Southwest batting order tonight for Walt Weiss. DJ LeMahieu will continue in that leadoff role. And you'll see him there, I'm sure, quite frequently over the next week or so. Josh Rutledge, Cargo, Michael Kadire, 27 straight, he's hit it. Then Arenado, Helton, Tori Alba, Colvin playing center field, and Roy Oswald. Clayton Kershaw, and the first pitch is sliced foul. How about this number for Kershaw? He has not won a ball game at Coors Field since May 30th, 2010. The Rockies have had their way with him here, but not everybody else. Six and five, 121 and a third. Earned run average, whip below one, strikeouts almost three to one, four to one, I should say. But this is an interesting note Duck gave me. This is crazy, Drew. He's given up seven home runs in 2013. Five to the Padres in 17 innings, only two to the rest of Major League Baseball in 104 innings. Isn't that something? And Kershaw, as good as he is, and I mean, he's, he's better than good. He's great. They're only nine and eight in his starts this year. And you and, have to and look yet at he's third, George, as you know, in ERA. The league's hitting 195 against him, but he has among the lowest run support in all of baseball. Well, you look back to the average against Clayton Kershaw. He leads all of baseball since 2009 with a 206 average. Other pitchers on that list, all guys that uh, this ball get down the hands of DJ. Kershaw 206, Kane 222, Verlander 224. Jared Weaver 225 and Gio Gonzalez 227. I mean, they're all top pitchers in the game. Hey, take a look at this pitch coming in from center field. All fastballs. This last one was elevated and uh, in on the hands at that last cut. Got the soft ground ball in the second. I still believe there's only about 8, 10, maybe 12 true number ones in baseball. And of that group, this guy's not outside the top three. Here's the 1 0 on Rutledge. You want further evidence uh, to go with some of the stats that George just threw your way. Each of the last two years, he's won the ERA title in the National League, and he may win a third straight. 2 0. And Rutledge hits it sharply. Mark Ellis knocks it down, and then he rolled, looked like he rolled his ankle. Rutledge will reach. Well, Mark looks to be okay walking around. The Rockies have a base runner. Going over after the baseball, you're right. I, I'm not sure what happened there on that side, but 
Obviously, uh, something strange did happen. And an error on Ellis. Dodgers defense is brought to you by Excel Energy. Make the choices that fit your life. Excel will provide you the energy to power it. Visit ResponsibleByNature.com to learn more. Ethier's been pushed to left field with the emergence of Puig. Matt Kemp remains in center. Uribe Ramirez, Ellis Gonzalez, who's terrific at first base. And A.J. Ellis has been unbelievable behind the plate throwing guys out. Cargo takes ball one. A.J. Ellis leading all of baseball. 17 of 33 throwing uh, would-be base stealers out. The percentage at 51.5% the best in the game. And the 17 caught stealing the best in the game. Ooh, good cut on a high heater there. Cargo doesn't have a very good average, nor does many people against Kershaw, but he is at, has hit a couple of home runs against him. He's done damage against the Dodgers this year, 400 average. Cargo hit his 22nd on Sunday. Both the Rockies and Dodgers were off yesterday. Dodgers on Sunday beat the Phil 6 to 1. His ability to get in and out and do it with velocity, you know, 91, short, quick, slight hesitation at the top, comes right at you, and, I mean, it's just great extension out front by Kershaw. And these are upside-down counts. You never want to be in, particularly with guys that have put away stuff. Cargo with a one and two count against Kershaw, who averages right about a strikeout per inning pitch. Makes the catch. I don't know if the ball knuckled or the sun was a factor. Well, the sun shouldn't have been a factor. The sun's kind of in left center. I think it may have been some lights. It may have been some white shirts. First trip to Coors Field, whatever. He started to overrun the baseball. Stopped, thought he had it. Right here, he puts the brakes on. And whoa, wait a minute. I think the ball knuckled. That's what I'm thinking. That ball was squared up pretty good on a 1 2 count. I think it was knuckling at it. So here's Michael Kadire. He kept the hitting streak alive on Sunday in his final at bat, an eighth inning at bat, and he singled sharply up the middle. It's the only time during the 27 game stretch that he's had to produce a hit in his final at bat to keep the hitting streak alive. And ball one. Nope, excuse me, a delayed strike call by Tim Timmons. So here's a breakdown of the 27 games. In his fourth at bat, twice he's come up with a hit. How impressive was that? 14 times he's gotten it out of the way very quickly. And this ball bounced to a rebay at third. So Kershaw is through the first inning. Rockies leave Rutledge aboard after the error by Mark Ellis. We'll go to the second, no score.
brought to you by the Honey Smoked Fish Company. Secrets of the Fire to Ready to Eat Superfood. And here's Mark Stout again. Mark. All right, guys. George mentioned that Clayton Kershaw hasn't won since he pitched here on May 30th of 2010. That means Roy Oswald has won more recently here than Kershaw. His last start at Coors Field was June 10th of 2010. As we see him in an Astros uniform, he went seven in that game, scattered four hits and a couple of runs, struck out nine Rockies, got the win in a one-run game. Now, he left leading 5-2. But that game ended up being 5-4 because Wilton Lopez came in for the Astros and Carlos Gonzalez, Troy Tularitsky, and Todd Helton greeted him with back-to-back-to-back -back -back singles. Got some runs off of him, but still, Oswald got the win in that game. Pretty interesting that he's got a win more recent here at Coors Field than Kershaw, guys. Well, Mark, he pitches very well historically at Coors Field. It's, it's one of the other reasons the Rockies were very intrigued about Oswald when they realized he still had... You know, the arm speed that allows him to touch 94. 4-0 four and oh, lifetime at five starts at Coors Field with a very low ERA. Andy look, Ramirez with an 0-2 count. But look where else he pitched. I mean, Houston, a band box. Philadelphia, a band box. Worse than what it is here at Coors Field. And Andy Ramirez now has a 13-game hitting streak. And that is what he's done throughout this great run of his he's going the other way like he did when he won a batting title George with the Marlins 0-2 count though not a good pitch a high fastball that ran right back over the middle of the plate at 91 miles an hour Royal tell you not a pitch where he wanted to put it he wanted that ball down and on the outer half of the plate to try to get him pull off the baseball so Ramirez at first he has the second longest hitting streak in the National League to cut him And Andre Ethier. Ethier's numbers better over the last month, but still down by his standards, like Matt Kemp, who's on deck. Dodgers have won eight of their last nine. And after all of the talk in Los Angeles that Don Mattingly was going to lose his job. Well, it just tells you also, Drew, that how much uh, support he had from Stan Caston and the other people, Ned Coletti, that were in charge. Yeah, and, and they understood. They were, absolutely. Well, they should. I mean, they, they were going through a period like the Rockies did last year where so many key players were hurt. It was only 13 games into the season that they were over 500 at seven and six all the way back on April the 15th. They're trying to climb back there now. Just the whole vibe with this club completely different from the last time they were here. Yeah, wait till you get Carl Crawford back. He's played two games in a row went seven innings yesterday and was one for three. He's uh, working out at Rancho Cucamonga in the Cal League. And he's not far from returning and then they have a problem. You will have four guys that by resume need to play every day in, in uh, Kemp, Ethier, Crawford, and now Puig. And Puig ain't sitting. It's a nice problem to have. The problem is you try to move one of those guys. If they're not up to their capabilities, you're looking at a lot of money to try to move. But obviously with the Dodgers, that hasn't been any kind of a hurdle to jump so far. Not, not with the new ownership group. Three and one, nobody out. Hanley Ramirez at first base. He takes off, and this is a line drive base hit. And now it's first and third. Today's the seventh matchup between the Rockies and Dodgers, and the Rockies won two of three in L.A. They won two of three at Coors Field. They swung the bat well against them. By and large, they pitched pretty well. But this is the best lineup, the deepest lineup that the Rockies will have faced with L.A. I mean, all, all you need to know is right now the six-hole hitter in George is up for the Dodgers. His name's Matt Kemp. Yeah, and I mean, he struggled. That's why he's hitting six. But there's other guys out in front of him that have been very, very good. Kemp this year, 182 with runners in scoring position. He's yet to master Roy Oswald. He's won for 11 in his career. Many people believe he's still recovering from that shoulder injury. That's a strike. There's two home runs. Kemp 
dealt with another leg issue recently was on the DL for three plus weeks. Two strike count Rockies fans we want to answer your questions on air during Toyota talk we'll do it in the fifth inning. Here's how you get involved text the word Toyota followed by your question to 720-720. The one thing that Oswald has done so far in this game is worked inside on every hitter to get ahead. The mistakes have come on 0212 counts when the ball got elevated. They'll try to break the bat off of Matt Kemp one more time. Round ball to third could be two. Arenado loses that opportunity. The Rockies get just one and a run scores. Now that's unusual because Nolan Arenado, as you know, is sure handed as they come. And Kemp runs well, so there's no guarantee that you would have been able to turn the 5 4 3, but it was hit pretty but he made the right enough choice that you would have had a shot right early enough in the game go ahead and get the out at first base He's gonna try to backhand it caught it right up on the heel of the glove popped out and really recognizing what's going on Made the snap throw to first to get uh, Kemp to get one out AJ Ellis with a runner at second AJ one of the more patient hitters in baseball And those are the kind of guys that drive you crazy as a pitcher. You miss just a little bit off the plate, they take it. Instead of going your way, it goes their way. Pesky. You see it here on this uh, Ford strike zone. Good fastball in her half. Good curveball, and it's one and two. Ellis on the year hitting 222 with or 220, excuse me, with runners in scoring position coming right out of the hand. Roy Oswald, perfect curveball on well, the Mike Shaw Subaru Super Bowl. You can just see this thing well out in front of the pitch, not able to handle it. One and two on AJ Ellis. Auto glass damage, Safe Flight Auto Glass, 303 287 5000, safelight.com. AJ Ellis, one for 11 against Rockies pitching this year. I look at him, George, as kind of a late bloomer. There's a lot of guys like that. Shoved down the minor leagues for a number of years. They get their one break, take advantage of it, has success, and you go, wow, where, where's he been? He's 27, 28 years old. The guy pitched for the Cardinals for a number of years. Ryan Franklin spent 12 years in the minor leagues and he got nine years in the big leagues. You like hearing those stories, and I think players in the minor leagues like reading about those stories. AJ Ellis began his professional career in 2003. He got three at bats in the big leagues in 08. He got 10 at bats in 09 in the big leagues. 108 in 2010. 85 in 2011. No swing. And then finally, last year. 10 years into his professional career, he finally stuck at the big leagues. And in 133 games, he had 270 with 13 home runs, 52 ribbies, walked 65 times, and on base percentage at 373, he really arrived. But it took a while. 32 year old catcher. And that's outside, he walks. First and second, just the second walk allowed in three ball games by Roy Oswald. And that'll bring up Juan Arriba. 
I'd like to remind everybody the Chicago Cubs are on their way into town and uh, make sure you get your tickets for that when uh, the Cubs come through here July 19th through the 21st so get your tickets for that ball game today well the Dodgers made a deal with the Cubs earlier today I'll show you the trade they made after this pitch to a rebate Matt Guerrero veteran right hander was traded to Chicago and Carlos Marble who's the longtime closer of the Cubs was designated for assignment a couple of days ago goes to Los Angeles now Marble is not here in Denver Rebay with that patented bail step in the bucket swing, but he is a strong dude. A lot of bat speed. You know, that's the thing about it. He uses a little bit heavier bat with a lot of weight at the end, so when he does get it going through the zone, it creates a lot of leverage on the ball, and that, that's where he has that success. You make a mistake middle half in. As he's gotten older, slider more of a favorite pitch than fastball. This is on through a base hit cutting the bag at third and coming home is Ethier. And it is two to nothing LA as a rebate drives in his 17th run. Third hit in the inning and also a walk. Put it right where he wanted to, but Arebe opens up on this thing, and he's able to take. Welcome to Mike Shaw Super Super Bowl. Look at this front knee right here. See how he clears that out of the way, which gets the hips gone. He allows him to keep the hands inside and then think up the middle. Exactly what he did. Good job of hitting to drive in the run. Clayton Kershaw takes a strike. Kershaw. Likes to swing the bat. Now he's going to go down and check with Tim Wallet. See if he missed a sign. And he goes, "Hey, Tim, can you go over and tell Donnie that I got a home run? <laughs> tell him that you know I like hitting off right-handers. I'm hitting 189. I got a home run and three RBIs. I told him all that, and Don said for you to punt. <laughs> and he might not do that. He's going to do that. Ooh. Ball and a strike." That back, it's two and one. Clayton Kershaw last year won the Roberto Clemente Award. What a prestigious award that is! It recognizes a big league player who best represents the game through positive contributions on and off the field, including sportsmanship and community involvement. Just the second Dodger to ever capture the award. Steve Garvey did in 81. We found Kershaw's challenge, a charitable organization that encourages people to give back to at risk kids, communities, and they also have a cornerstone charity, Arise Africa. And they spend a lot of time there in the offseason. And he's gone. Kershaw is out number two. That's the first strikeout of the game for Roy Oswald. And he'll be disappointed he didn't do his job. Who wants tacos? Remember when the Rockies score seven in a game, go to participating Colorado Taco Bell locations the next day between four and six. Get your Rockies taco special. Mark Ellis popped to second, leading off the ball game. He's up there with two outs. AJ Ellis at second, Juan Arebe at first. And the sliders in, ball one. Mark, another one of those Dodgers that wasn't healthy through the first third of the season. Had a quad injury. Says uh, the legs feel good now.
Yep, elevated fastball. See, you remember the last time it was all in, 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 in. Now all of a sudden, Roy's second time through, and it's quick to be in a second time through. The second inning, you trail by two. Confidence Tori Alba throwing out 40% base dealers also gives you a lot of confidence to throw behind runners. He faked the throw there. Hanley Ramirez led off the inning with a single on an 0-2 pitch. Ethier singled with Ramirez going. Kemp grounded out to drive in a run. Ellis walked. Arebe drove in a run with a single. Two to nothing, LA. Nobody's going to get to this baseball other than a fan. Two and two. And it's three and two. I'll tell you what, this young man is a, not a young man, but this pitcher is a competitive guy. He gets disgusted after every pitch. It's how you win 169 game, 163 ball games at the big league level and only lose 98. Broken bat roller to short. Rutledge has to hustle, and he's going to get Ellis by a step. In the inning, two runs on three hits. The Dodgers in the middle of the second have a two to nothing lead. In the second, Todd helped your Victoria Alba to follow. It's time for the big hit presented by Mako, the company that repairs all kinds of hits. How about the game-winning walk-off hit a few days ago by Nolan Arenado against Jeremy Affelt. Check out your local Mako for collision repairs and auto painting for as long and for as low as $349. Visit Mako.com today. He's had a base runner in the first. Josh Rutledge reached on an error by Mark Ellis. Just the fourth error committed by Ellis this year at second base. Arenado takes ball one.
Arenado one for two against Kershaw. And then he's out front. Throw that slider. Oh, about 23 percent of the time. Also curveball and a changeup, four pitch mix. Very few changeups though. We didn't have to. You know, I mean, it's not something. It's something maybe two years down the road in 600 innings where he might have to start looking that way. But as of right now, he doesn't have to. The other fastball, curveball, slider. Typically, he doesn't. And then he strikes out a lot of guys, but he doesn't want to. He'd rather get ground ball out. That's what Drew was just talking about here. The fastball at 92.5. That's a change up at 85. This ball rifle to Ethier and left. That's a couple of hard hit balls that uh, also have been problematic for the Dodger outfielders. Yasiel Puig kind of waving across at Andre Ethier because he had the same issue, George, trying to make a catch. Almost that almost came it. out. Yep, almost popped out. Had a little snow cone action there. That hit right into the heel and shot right up towards the end of the glove just because he had two hands up there. Boy, if you're watching at home on a Mike Shaw Subaru Supermo, Look what happens right here. See where he put that hand up. Now he didn't go ahead and utilize it. But at least that off hand had a chance to keep the ball from hitting the ground. He turned his head actually. Uh, 250 uh, in his career with a home run and three RBIs against Kershaw. He's faced him 32 times. He struck out 10 times and walked twice. One and one. On the edge, one and two. Rockies are seeing the top two Dodger pitchers in this series Kershaw and Zach Greinke. Greinke will go tomorrow, and then Capuano on the 4th of July against Chassin. Chatwood goes for the Rockies tomorrow. And then it's off. On the road, as we discussed uh, at the top of the broadcast, 10 games before the All Star break. All in the West Arizona, San Diego, and LA. Uribe. Two outs. Rockies fans. <laughs> oh, 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 I'm going to read it twice. No, no, this is not right. <laughs> read it again. It says George Frazier will be taking over the Root Sports Twitter account this week. Uh, let me tell you How what. How about that? Let me tell How you what. How about that? You, you ain't Moving doing it. Up. Yeah, I'm ready now. You are. You, I got it. I'm ready. I you, got it. You are I'm telling you, doing, I got it. I got you it. I'm ready. doing this without a lot of help. Well, I'm not doing anything. I'm just answering questions. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> George, I guess somebody's going to do all the typing. George will be answering your questions <laughs> at 2.30 tomorrow, so don't wait. Submit your questions to the Root Sports Twitter account. At Root Sports R, uh, underscore RM. Do it now. That's at Root Sports underscore RM. George will be on with you at 2 30 tomorrow. Oh my goodness. Should be fun. 2 0 on Tori Alba. The guy that he, boy, has he swung a bat well of late since May 30th, 372 average, 16 of 43. So you tweet all the time, and that what you call it? Tweeting? I, no, I don't. I, you know what? I uh, oh, I bet you tweeted today. I haven't. I have not yet. I, you know, yeah, you I tweet Dougie? about yeah. once a yeah. day, maybe twice. Usually once, and some days not at all. Line shot, center field, and no, that's not a catch. Tori Alba wide turn, and he'll come back. Matt Kemp tried to sell it to Mark Wegner, the second base umpire. He was not buying. Rockies have hit some balls hard in the opening couple of frames against the elevated fastball some humpback liners going into the outfield You see that ball just skip into the glove of Matt Kemp lucky it did too I mean he's watching to make sure this glove He's going to try to short hop this thing and he kept that other hand the bare hand behind the glove to brace himself when he hit You can clearly see not a catch Colvin will swing the bat against Kershaw but That's three plays in the outfield on line drives. We haven't seen Good catches, clean catches on baseball. 
I don't know if they all had the, 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 the same trajectory that got up in the light banks as you offered up, George. It, it'd be hard to see three balls end up in white shirts. Right, I mean, I that, mean three that different things like this. They're not picking it up from somewhere. So, something weird's going on. But the positive sign is the Rockies have taken some good hacks already against Kershaw. Now you have to bunch a few together and have to find some empty spaces. Rockies down 2 nothing. Colvin takes the ball. It's one and one. Tyler one for four against Kershaw. That's not su a surprise, the lack of at bats. Typically, you're going to load up with right handed bats against Kershaw. Lefties barely have a pulse against Clayton Kershaw, 128 average. Their lefty you take before Kershaw in baseball, George? You know, I was thinking about that before the ball game. I can't think of one. I mean, CC Sabathia, obviously a dominant guy. Who's the guy with Boston when he's right? He had to walk off the mound the other day. Lester. Lester. Uh, you know, the other guy that's gaining a lot of attention, as he should be, is uh, the Corbin kid out at Patrick with, Corbin. You know, 9 and 0 right now, nastiest slider around. But he just doesn't have the history this guy has. Yeah, you mentioned a lot of good pitchers, but I still think well, this GM is, this is take the guy. The, the, yeah. take this guy. Not only that, it's what you talked about earlier, the Roberto Clemente Award, the whole makeup part of it, the whole uh, circle of life with this guy is good. And, and Nothing the guy, bad. And the guy you mentioned, has impeccable character and does a ton of things off the field. CC Sabathia uh -huh. has done it a lot longer than, than, than Kershaw. But at this stage of his career, Kershaw's got better stuff now than CC. CC's oh, still yeah. outstanding. Sure. CC with 199 wins, trying to get number 200. And this ball's tagged deep center field. But Kemp's going to get back and make the catch. That's four line drives by the Rockies so far in the game. But they trail two to nothing. hit his first time up so that's his first hit in the month of July he's hitting a thousand in July hit 436 in June you look at those numbers George and, and we'll find out in the next 24 hours you could be looking at the player of the month in the National League in fact I think it'd probably be a surprise if he's not the player of the month in the National League we used to get those pieces of paper and vote on that kind of thing maybe we'll get it in the next couple of days but I'll tell you what I'd like to see who's beat that a little bit better than what he's done an unbelievable stat for you. Unfortunately, I can use it now. Puig 
when he puts the first pitch of it at bat in play is 15 for 19. First pitch swing, Ted Williams. Larry Walker always uh, went by a lot by that an awful lot. Walker hit over 400 when he swung first. On a 1 0 count, which he has right now, he's hitting 688. Somebody needs to tell him there's not another league to go play in. This is it. It can't, there's no, yeah, nowhere else no to go. Bigger. Well, prior to him joining the ball club, 23 and 32. Since he's been there, the 15 and 11. Will you look at how this kid's put together? He's 22, by the way. They have three guys in their lineup that look like football players. This ball rifled to deep right and off the wall. Padire firing the second on line and Puig almost went off the base. I don't know why he didn't slide. Yeah, that's how you get hurt, to be honest with you. He stretched a great way to stretch a groin right there. Let's look at this pitch from Oswald. The ball they wanted on the outer half on the knees. You can see him pointing to the sky. Wrong ballpark. Hit very hard. Right off the wall. Now watch him coming out of the box. He knows he's got a chance for at least two, maybe a three if I turn it up a notch. That is terrific speed going into second base. The ability to stop and start. Adrian Gonzalez. This is hit deep right field. It's going to get out of here. Two run home run for Gonzalez, his 11th of the year. And now the Dodgers lead it 4 to nothing. Well, the one thing I've noticed, uh, okay, if you're a hitter sitting in the dugout, Oldswall has pounded the hitters in, 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 in. And I think that's where they've capitalized here in this inning. It's on balls they thought were going to be in, but they ended up going away. They ran back out over the middle of the plate, got hit. And now let's look at the pitch on Gonzalez. They're trying to run that fastball in. He just cleared the whole front side, got the head of the bat out in a hurry. On the Mike Shaw Subaru Super Bowl, you can really catch it and what he did. Andy Ramirez at the plate. Breaking ball for a strike. Here's the home run again by Adrian Gonzalez. Adrian smells RBIs, always has, hitting 353 this year. With runners in scoring position. Rutledge gets Ramirez one out, and that'll bring up Ethier. 4 0 LA. I mentioned this is a different Dodger team. Don Mattingly, who you're going to see in a moment as soon as Lee Hanley Ramirez clears space, quoted the other day, he said, hey, he goes, it's like boardwalk and park place with houses and hotels all over the properties. You can get hurt. We're a very dangerous offensive club. And he's right, up and down that lineup now. They are very formidable. Well, George, we heard from Mike Kruko and Dwayne Kuyper, giant announcers. The last few days has said, wait till you see this guy Puig. And we've heard about it from other people. A lot has been written already in the first month, and so far he has been as advertised. Maybe a little bit better. <laughs> Is that possible? Yeah, but I mean, seriously, maybe a little bit better. Kemp takes ball one on a curveball. I'm trying to think of somebody I've you know, played against or watched in a game like this. Bo Jackson's a good one. I mean, it's unfair to you both players. But Bo Jackson's a, a good spot of what to, to start at. Dave Winfield. I mean, you know, I'm thinking of guys just big power guys that can really run, you know, could throw, hit with power. I mean, great big guys that uh, for that right side that could just do damage with a swing. You know, he was signed to a $42 million deal, George, and the scout. And, and the, you know he has to get an okay by the organization. Obviously, he spent 42 million dollars. Right. But when the organization signed him, they had never seen him play a game. They signed him based on watching him hit, run, and throw. Last year he was hurt. Obviously, he defected from Cuba. Kemp is gone. But this kid is uniquely talented, to say the least. 
He had a double on Adrian Gonzalez, a two-run home run. It's 4 nothing L.A. And Mark Stout, I'm Drew Goodman. Roy Oswalt will lead it off, and then it'll be the top of the order. The Rockies have hit some balls hard, but right at outfielders in the first couple of innings, and the Dodgers have gotten after Roy Oswalt. Register now for your chance to win tickets to Toby Keith with special guest Joe Nichols on the 27th of July at Old Cheyenne. You'll also be entered to win baseball package, a whole lot of good things. For official rules and to enter, visit cfdrodeo.com slash Toby Keith. Two strikes on well, the where, where Mississippi native. Yeah, I had a blast up there last year. I can't wait to get back up there this year. That's going to be fun. We got an off day, and I'm heading to the shoots. I'm going to go watch the Bucks. I love it, man. We used to televise that back in the day every year, and that you're right. That is big fun. Rockies are 23 and 16 inside the National League West. Strike three, which is the best record inside the division of any team. Next, the Giants are 23 and 17. And then everybody else is under 500. And the Dodgers have been awful at 14 and 23. And consider this they were 9 and 23. They've won, they've won five straight inside the division. Strikeout of Oswald, the first of the evening for Kershaw. Giants getting handled right now in Cincinnati. Homer Bailey has a no no in the eighth inning in that ball game. The only Rocky. To make the All Star game in the Pacific Coast League was Ryan Wheeler, the third baseman at Colorado Springs. Surprised me a little bit. Culberson has played great. Well, Dickerson would have made it, George, but he's up here. You have to believe he was hitting 386. I think DJ LeMayhew would have made it. He was hitting 364 when he got called up. Just surprised only one made it out of there. Well, you got to think too that Drew Pomerantz makes it at eight one, and Drew Pomerantz would have made it at eight one, leading the league in strikeouts. You know, given given your druthers, a Triple A All Star game or a big I'd, league roster, I'd come up here. Yeah, that's a great curveball. Two punch outs.
Dropped the yellow hammer right in the middle of the plate. Well received by Ellis and a strikeout on the Mike Shaw Subaru Super Bowl. It's great 90 angles with his arm to create that good 12 6 rotation. Rutledge with two outs. And a strike on Josh. Josh had a sharp ground ball to the left of Mark Ellis. He knocked it down. Didn't make a play. He was given an error. No, I just said something about the angles and the 90 degree turns. And when I'm talking about that with a curveball, you're not going to throw a good curveball if you let your hand come around it here. And you saw that on the Mike Shaw Super Super Bowl whenever Kershaw threw that good curveball. Watch his pitch coming in. There was a fastball in. It'll be caught, should be caught. And I'll try to button this up real quick after the catch. But the thing is, you want to create 90s with your hands. So when the rotation comes over, the ball's coming out in that downward spin at 12 6. You hear Drew and I talk about on air. So that's one thing we showed you on the Mike Shaw, and you look for it again when as the game goes forward and we show you some of those curveballs coming out. Look at the 90 on Kershaw right now. Hands to the side, fingers in front. Great downward rotation. Go to the top of the fourth inning. A.J. Ellis won a rebate Clayton Kershaw to face Roy Oswalt. Two runs given up by Oswalt in the second, two more in the third on a two run home run by Adrian Gonzalez. Dodgers winners of eight of their last nine. The Rockies two and two so far in this homestand. They lost a tough one three to two in the makeup game against the Mets and then took two of three against the Giants. And that's a ball toward the gap in left center field. AJ Ellis, who's digging for second, throw on line, safe. Straight away here, and, and again, Coleman takes off on this baseball, but it got down so early. So what he's trying to do is angle to the backside, being left-handed, to get to the baseball so he can spin and try to make that throw. Watch spin right here, get that back foot planted, and yet be accurate. Arebe had an RBI single up the middle. And this up the middle and on through again. A.J. Ellis coming home. Colvin's throw is cut off by Oswald, who's not supposed to be in the middle of the diamond there. And Roy very frustrated. 5 nothing. Very frustrated right now. Eight hits, five runs. You're working into the fourth inning without somebody out. A man of this stature, a guy that's accomplished what he has. He's not having the success he wants to have, and that's sort of a tough pill to swallow right now. You see Roy standing out there in the middle of the field, He's supposed to be back behind the catcher immediately.
Kershaw struck out trying to bunt his first time. How about this? In 2010, he led all the major leagues or National League with 18 sacrifice bunts among pitchers. This year, he's got three. So a rebate a second on the sack bunt. One four. And that'll bring up the top of the order and Mark Ellis once again. Time's running out to vote for the 2013 All-Star Game. Help send your Rockies to the All-Star Game. We've talked about that already. Vote 35 times on Rockies.com or on your mobile phone. Voting ends Thursday, July 4th, 959 p.m. Mountain Time. So make sure you vote. On the iPhone, get on the iPad, get on whatever you got to, but vote for Cargo and vote for Kadire. Two well deserving participants. What's your thought, George, on Yasiel Puig? There are many people out there in baseball that think he should be an all star. And my, my thought is, as I ask you, I'll give you my opinion, is that it's unfair to guys like Michael Kadire or somebody else who's going to get bumped off who has. Worked hard for three and a half months. Low throw help fields it. Nice play by Arenado. Ellis retired. Uh, I tell you right now, that's uh, sometimes people don't understand how difficult that play was for Todd Helton. That long snap hop there, the errors that he saves over and over again. It is a nice play by Arenado, but a better play by Todd Helton at first to keep this ball into the glove and not going into the seats right now. You talk about a comforting feeling for anybody, let alone a rookie. To anybody, can, can we be an all-star after 101 at bats? Tough for me to, to, to agree with that. I, I'm I, sorry, it just yeah. does. I mean, it, it's great player. I just think it's not. Listen, it, it's unfair for the guys that have put a resume together and built a resume over three plus months. George, what you order? That? No. One ball, one strike on Puig. A single and a double off the top of the scoreboard in right. Two outs. A rebate second base. When you look at the outfielders, the, the glutton of outfielders that are all deserving. Strike three on the outside corner. Queen, a strikeout victim. In the inning, A.J. Ellis, who began things with a double, came around on the Aribe base hit. The Dodgers are up 5 nothing.
Brute Sports is brought to you by the Ford Super Duty. Built stronger, built better, built Ford Tops. Ford Super Duty. By Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. By CenturyLink, your link to what's next. And by the Honey Smoke Fish Company. Secrets in the Fire. It's a ready to eat superfood. Carlos Gonzalez will lead off the fourth. He had a line drive to right his first time up. And may have been knuckling because Puig had trouble catching the baseball. One and one. The cargo has made a significant move in fan voting, thankfully. It's now second among all National League outfielders. For Carlos Beltran, and he lost his bottom hand there. Cargo's behind Beltron, and then Justin Upton in third. You know, Upton's a guy, George, who had the great start to the season, but has struggled since the opening six weeks. Yeah, it's still got a lot of people's attention, though, and they're still going to, you know, a very popular guy in Arizona when they traded him. And Cargo loses the bat again in the strikeout. Watch that bottom hand come through on the back. He just let go of it completely here and went all the way around. I mean, it's full torque swing now, and he lost one of the grips on it. Also lost that thumb protection that he has. Bat ended up, fortunately, right out in front of the plate. So here's Kadire, Michael. 0 for 1. 27 game hitting streak, and that's outside ball one. He was telling me earlier, this is without question the best three-month run of his career. And this ball to center field. Kemp barely has to move. Kadire hoping to be an all-star. Should be an all-star. No his question. second selection. He went a couple of years ago with the Twins. Well, no question. 344, 14, and 48. Come on. Wells Fargo customers get you two for one Rockies club level tickets today by going to wellsfargo.com slash Rockies. Wells Fargo Bank member FDIC. Nolan Arenado lined to left his first time. Kershaw's best year statistically was 2011. He went 21 and 5, was a National League Cy Young winner. You throw a fastball in the mid low to mid 90s your changeup could be at 85. That's the last pitch to Arenado. Kershaw can be very emotional on the mound, and you saw that in that last slider that hung up as Todd waits to hit against him. But yet, such good command of the fastball still can get some outs. Wow. Really? Quick made that catch, and then somehow didn't run into the stands. And he's going to be the first one off the field. Kershaw gives the glove five. That was quite a play. That's 245 pounds rerouting itself.
inning as we go to the top of the fifth inning. AT&T trivia question. Among pitchers with five plus career starts at Coors Field, who has the lowest career ERA? Wall dealing to Adrian Gonzalez, it's one and oh. Adrian, a two run home run in his last at bat. Homer Bailey, one out away from a no hitter in Cincinnati. Reds up three nothing on the Giants. It would be his second career no hitter. He had one last year, in fact, in his last start of the year. This is a base hit to right for Adrian. Is there any news on Tulo? I talked to him uh, a couple of days ago. He said he's feeling much better. He's swinging the bat a little bit. He's throwing. But there's no timetable as of yet. And it's day. official now. Homer Bailey just no hit the San Francisco Giants. Second no hitter in four months of baseball. Tudo Whiskey today. Long toss from right center field all the way to the foul line. This is Homer Bailey on his 109th pitch. On the ground to third. Homer Bailey's a guy, George, about a year and a half ago, the Reds were ready to give up on him. Came to the big leagues at a very young age. Very young age. You can see this. One walk, nine strikeouts, 109 innings. The Reds win it, obviously, 3-0. He's close to a perfecto. I don't know if there was any errors in that ball game. He was one walk from a perfect game. How are the pitchers selected for the All-Star game? Patrick uh, wants to know in Denver. Managerial choice. That's uh, that. And a, and a commissioner does have a role in all that. Yep. Commissioner can get involved. You know, like Rex Brothers with only two runs given up in all these innings. His name being mentioned USA Today about should be on the All Star team. The stingiest relief pitcher in baseball. And I would agree. Well, especially because the game. Mean something with uh, home field advantage at stake in the World Series. You get David Ortiz up in the eighth inning. How nice would it be for Bruce Bochy with traffic to go out and say, "Hey, I'm going to have Rex Brothers face." Zach, what's the roster expanded to now? 30, 32. Dougie's going to check. Two and two count on Hanley Ramirez. This is a twisting ground ball. It has funky spin. It was off the end of the bat. And DJ had one play. Now it's to first. Adrian Gonzalez to second. What do you mean by he pulled the string? Bernie has that question. And, and talking about a changeup. Talking about a changeup, exactly. Whenever you reach out and you throw in the baseball, you, you pull the string, you back everything back up again versus having it. Come out with a fluid deal. You kind of pull down on the baseball. A lot of people talk about that, but that is something that's uh, relatively easy to do on a circle change, the old fashioned change up that a lot of people teach. Heath, you at the plate right now. Well, if you give another demonstration. Yeah, I did real quick. A lot of times, what you do, they say pull down the window shades. When you are normally on a fastball, you're reaching out and your clearance body and everything else. But on this certain pitch, a lot of times they say pull the window shade. So reach out and pull the string down. So the ball flutters out of the hand, gets backspin, reduce velocity because you've got a choke back in your hand where you don't have it in a normal fastball grip. And George, that's a good pitch right there. I, the changeup has more different grips to it than any other pitch. I mean, you get the Fosh ball. Why don't you well, show some of, of the grips? I mean, you know, the thing is about it, and when I try to teach a changeup, 
I want to see the size of the hands, and everybody goes big hands, right? So a lot of times guys with big hands, they can't throw that circle change. They call it a circle because you make a circle with your index and thumb. Some guys have to throw what they call a three-finger changeup, where they put the middle finger right down the center of the baseball, lay the other two on the other side. Some guys will throw what Drew's talking about, this Fosh thing, where you've got to split with these fingers, and the other two are guiding the baseball with the thumb underneath. Of course, you always got to split the change, get outside of that, where you just get on top outside the seams, create some more movement off of it, a lot like a sinker ball. Uh, and again, it's just, you know, when I start to look at a guy to teach a changeup to them, whether young or old, I want to see how big his hand is, but I also want to see how big the joints are in the hands and the fingers. I want to see how they are. If they're short little bitty ones, but he got kind of longer fingers, it's a matter of grip you might put on a baseball for a guy. So, I mean, there's a lot more to it than just saying, here's the ball, grip it, go throw a circle change. What's the old pop ball? Well, if you want to stick it back in there, I could throw this thing no matter what. You stick it back in your hand all the way back in the palm like this and play catch. You know, and the one that the Brownie threw, Kevin Brown threw all the time, He'd take the ball and turn it sideways. So he'd come this way, and in the hand, the ball would come out here. But he threw it like 85, 90 miles an hour. Man, how do you do that? Oh, well, he did it. Now he's in Georgia relaxing. He also threw his uh, two-seamer about 96. And that was a special arm. Oswald with a one and two count on Andre Ethier. Adrian Gonzalez at second. The Dodgers leading 5 0. The Rockies have been out hit 9 1. And he has gone. Oswald with his third punch out. That will bring up Matt Kemp. Kemp's 0 for 2. Had an RBI ground out. How do teams attain rights to Cuban players? Tony and Sheridan, Wyoming. Well, that, was a, that was an open bidding war. Yeah, really it is. I mean, it, they, they, they defect. They usually end up in the Dominican Republic, sometimes Venezuela, but most times it's it's the Dominican and Miami, down, then down to the Dominican Republic. Or I think in the case of Puig, wasn't it Mexico? Uh, I think it was, you're right. And and, I, and then it's open war bidding. I mean, you just go down and watch the guy work out, and most of these guys have a, a super agent with Scott Boris, and they, they sit out there and say, hey, here's the number. You want it or not? And again, he signed for $42 million, and the Dodgers never saw him play a game. He didn't play many games last year because he had an injury. And, oh, by the way, he was trying to escape <laughs> now from Cuba. He's a very, very bright young man by all accounts. His parents are engineers in Cuba. does have a full-time interpreter right now with him but he's rapidly picking up English by the way the rosters now in the National League and American League All-Star game are up to 34 two and two on Ken do you think they should expand the All-Star roster they have uh, Dave yeah, they really Lincoln. have. I mean, it well, used to be just 25, then it was 28, then it was 30, and now 34. There's a lot of people pushing for that young man to be on. Well, that young man, I think, is going to be in a lot of All-Star games. I don't know if this one next month should be his first up. Camp is down for the second time. We'll go to the bottom of the fifth. Five nothing, Dodgers.
been all Dodgers second inning. They would get a couple of runs, an RBI ground out, and then an RBI single up the middle by Juan Arebe, the former Rocky, Andre Ethier scored. Third inning, Adrian Gonzalez. He's always hurt the Rockies, and he's hurt a lot of clubs. Two run home run. Fourth inning. It was Arebe again with a base hit. On the right side, Kershaw working live for Todd Helton. Dodgers with five runs on nine hits. The Rockies without a run. They have one hit. Cooney Lexus Luxury has a new address now open at Greenwood Village. Todd owns 47 career home runs against L.A., which is the 11th most, tied for the 11th most against the Dodgers all time. Who do you think George is number one? Good swing by Todd. Who do you think's hit more home runs against the Dodgers than anybody else? Mickey Mantle. Man, Mickey Mantle wouldn't have played the Dodgers much. What are you talking about, Dodgers, L.A. Dodgers or Brooklyn Dodgers? Even if it was the Brooklyn Dodgers, that's a nice play by Mark Ellis. That's an unbelievable play by Ellis. Take a base hit away, right away from Todd Hill. Uh, I don't know. Give me a guess. Who is it? Let's watch this play one more time, and you let me know. Backhand right up the middle. Anybody but Helton. I mean, Todd saw the play get made, and it was a dandy, too, by Ellis. Bad hop, everything, and then a strong throw right on the money to first base. This Dodger ball club's tightened up not only offensively, but defensively, too. Eight in a row retired as Tori Alba comes up. He has the only hit for the Rockies, a line single to center. Kemp had a play on it, but he trapped it. That's another base hit for your beat. Boy, he's had a good year out there. The guy has hit more home runs than anybody against the Dodgers. Yeah. You're holding Willie, our entire Willie, audience. Willie Mays. How many did he hit? 59? 98. That's a lot. Tracy Ringlesby. Why are we showing Tracy? Because we thank you for texting in your questions to Toyota Talk. And uh, Tracy's going to answer some more of those questions on the Root Sports Facebook page at facebook.com slash Root Sports RM. Another place you find uh, George Frazier. George answers your questions. What is that, Tuesday and Fridays on Facebook, Frazier? No. No, Tracy gets angry if anybody takes that away from him. Out of the right hander now up. Oswald is in the on deck circle. By the way, Tori Alba this year, 458 against left handers, 11 for 24. Colvin ripped the ball to deep center his first time up. Tori Alba has both of the Rockies hits. ATT trivia question. Among pitchers with five plus career starts at Coors Field, who has the lowest career career ERA? Well, he did come into the ball game. Roy Oswald at 225. It's going up though. Colvin a foul tip held two outs. Roy will not hit. They'll allow Pacheco to hit in the game. 86 pitches tonight for Roy Oswald in five innings. He'll be disappointed with the five runs, nine hits given up in this game. Pacheco, the busiest pinch hitter for the Rockies this year. 18 times he's gone to the plate. Nice play there. Their defense worked. 278 average. Todd leads it 4 for 12 as a pinch hitter on his ball club. 
Tori Alba got a base hit. That's all. 5 nothing as we go to the 6th L.A. Presented by Sky Venture Colorado Indoor Skydiving. Nobody flying higher than Michael Kadire. He's hitting 27 straight. His best streak in Major League Baseball in a couple of years. Dan Ugly hit 33 straight back in 2011. If you've ever dreamed of flying, now's your chance. Visit SkyVentureColorado.com for more information. Rockets made a change on the hill. Roy Oswald, was pinch hit for last inning, gives way to Adam Adovino. For Adovino, it'll be his 25th appearance. Hey, Good trying, ERA. To, trying to buy a couple innings out of him here, so you can give that bullpen a little bit of rest when you're down on this downside, five to nothing to the to the Dodgers at this point. 41 and two thirds, a 1.84 run average. AJ Ellis at the plate. Ball one. And it's two and oh. AJ drew a walk his first time up. Missouri native. And the 2 0 from the native New Yorker, Brooklynite, and it's 3 0. And that was nice, other than the outcome, for Ottavino to be back at Boston. He went to school at Northeastern. And that's a four pitch walk. That'll bring up a rebate. Two for two, two singles, two RBIs. Should be two, perhaps, maybe not. Thought initially George A. Rutledge would have a play on the first hop. He uh, clearly did not, and did a good job to get it in short center field. So a force out. Well, he really did. High hop here. Now he's going to have to go back and angle the baseball. So it's an underhand side flip to DJ Lemayu. So when he gets to the baseball, it makes it a little bit harder for them to be able to turn because it's a second baseman. You're not sure where the runner is as far as bearing down on you, so it makes it a little bit difficult to turn it. Adavina leads the major leagues right now with 15 appearances of pitching two or more innings.
seventy nine innings a year ago was the fourth most. Of innings thrown by a relief pitcher third most on the club Renicky was eighty eight a while eighty. I think my favorite stat is when you look at the body of work of Clayton Kershaw. He's gone to describe how great he's been of pitchers since 1920 to throw a thousand or more innings. He has the lowest ERA of anybody in the history of the game. Say that again. Of starting pitchers since 1920 with a thousand or more innings and a hundred or more starts. His ERA is the lowest in the history of the game. To another impressive deal out of 166 starts, 99 or less at times, 99 or less pitches 55 times. You're talking about the innings he goes out and eats up. He's he's different. Got some runs tonight. There's 2.82 coming in of run support, second lowest in the National League. He eats up innings, seven or more in 13 of his 17 starts. Yet again, the club, the Dodgers, just nine and eight in his 17 starts this year. Mark Ellis to center field. Colvin's there. And that's the end of the Dodgers offensive work in the sixth inning. There was a walk and a man left. Dodgers five, Rockies nothing. Tune in Friday after the game for Rockies Real Time this week. We'll take you down to Sky Sox country in Colorado Springs. Charlie Blackman will give you a tour of Triple A baseball. It's Rockies Real Time. It's Friday after the game right here on Root Sports. Had an excellent chance of being on that ball club. DJ took it right back up the middle. Kershaw just barely got out of the way. Rockies third hit. And LeMahieu leads things off in the sixth with a sharp single to center. I mean, really sharp. Wow. Mike Shaw, Subaru, Super Bowl. Track the ball. Track it. Track it. Oh. That's scary stuff, right? You there. better believe it is. A number of guys that have been hit recently. Above the shoulders, it's not uh, a pleasant sight at all. And there's a bump by Rutledge who loses, uh, Kershaw loses his glove. And you can't throw it 
your glove at the ball, and I don't think he did that because Renee Latchman immediately asked Mike Winters, the crew chief. I thought he threw it at him, to be honest Dude. with you. Watch. He threw oh, it. Oh, yeah, at him. he did throw it at him. <laughs> yeah, he did. He just missed it. I, George, I, I don't think I've ever seen that. Yeah, Hanley, I think Hanley came in and talked to him, too, and said, hey, bud, you can't throw your glove at him. Have you ever seen that? No. Donnie's got a little smirk on his face, too, along with Rick Honeycutt. Here's Honeycutt, pitching coach of the longtime pitching coach of the Dodgers. Cargo is one out. It'll go as a sacrifice for Rutledge. His intent, though, down by five runs wasn't a sacrifice. He's trying to bunt for a hit. 0 1 on Gonzalez. The fastball by him at 93. It's 0 and 2. Gonzalez a line out and a strikeout. I'll tell you what, he just wore out that outside corner on him. He hadn't given him anything to hit. Gonna stay out there again, but Gonzalez able to just foul it off. The Dyer on deck, it's the Ford strike zone, and Kershaw consistently hits his spots like all the good ones do. So the Phillies ended the Pirates nine game winning streak three to one tonight in Pittsburgh. Two outs. Strikeout number five for Kershaw, and here comes Kadire. Both for two so far. Safe Flight Auto Glass. Give them a call 303 287 5000 online at safeflight.com. On Kadire, fastball in the inner half. Thought that was in off the plate a little bit. Maybe give a good idea of it right there. I mean, when you're hitting this high, nearly 350, or Kadire, you know your strike zone. You know what pitches are in the strike zone. And Kadire works on top of it. Easy play for Hanley Ramirez. And Adrian Gonzalez stayed on the back. That's all for the Rockies in the sixth. We go to the seventh inning, and the Dodgers have a 5-0 advantage.
Bird Sports is brought to you by Dodge. Visit Dodge.com or your local Dodge dealer today. By Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo customers get your 2 for one Rockies club level tickets today by going to wellsfargo.com slash Rockies. Wells Fargo Bank member FDIC. And by King Supers, more value for the way you live. Dodgers leading 5 nothing. Clayton Kershaw has been, well, Clayton Kershaw. And Yasiel Puig has been what we've heard about. Two for three. Hard single to left his first time up. A line double off the scoreboard and right his second time. Caught looking at a curveball his third time. This is his first look at Adam Adebino, and he gets a slider for a strike. I saw him nod his head right after the pitch, too. They told him in the dugout, look slider. And as soon as he got it, he was, he was mad he didn't take a swing at it. Now the sliders will get better and harder. That's inside a slider as well, one and one. And that was a dirty slider, one and two. You haven't seen one like that in a while. That was a good one. A really good one. Disappearing slider on the outside corner. Mike Shaw Subaru Super Bowl right out of the hand of Ottavino. A lot of velocity and a lot of break. This ball to center field and deep. Colvin going back and no more room. Puig has hit it out. His eighth home run. It's his third hit of the night. It's the eighth time. In the first month of his career, he's had at least three hits in a game. You talk about making a quick adjustment. I just want to see this pitch again. I thought it's a pretty good pitch. We're going to freeze it right out front. Look where he starts from. Okay. Here's the pitch. It's right on that outer half of the plate. And he takes this thing out of the ballpark. Really? I mean, you talk about some power. My goodness. It's different, isn't it, George? Well, it's just, you know, when he hit it, he tossed the bat. Watch when he hits this thing. All right, he hits that. There is so much bat speed coming through. See, he threw it. He knew he hit it out. Regardless of where he play, was playing, he knew he had hit that ball out of the ballpark. Man. He squared it up, I can tell you that. Take that slider just a little bit farther off the plate. Probably had the result on the other swing. Oh, God help. Man, oh, man. I don't think that, that ball's hit harder than the home run he hit. Here's Quig going to the dugout. And uh, the skipper says hello. Coaching staff and Big Mac. And then he gets a silent <laughs> treatment. All right. <laughs> well, the Dodgers again, they're having fun right now. This is a completely different ball club. And that's not good news for the rest of the National League West. Got a jaw like a running back. Little linebacker. How about this? Tori Alba, this ball's hit real high in the air. Got a little bit of a breeze coming in. He tosses the mask. Nice Tim Kevin says, I got it. You know what that looked like? That looked like the Sooners running the option back in the day. Pretty good pitch relationship. Well, I guess he either catches it or takes it off his face. One or the other. One and one on Hanley Ramirez, a base hit in the second to extend his hitting streak to 13 games. You know, the last couple of years with the Marlins, George, there was more controversy than output, it seemed. When you mentioned the name Hanley Ramirez, and then he was finally dealt to the Dodgers as the Marlins got rid of virtually everybody. Anybody they gave a dollar to, anybody they convinced in a trade, anybody they signed as a free agent. They were gone. 
one and two on Hanley, but Ramirez, and he's been hurt a lot this year, but of late, he is swinging the bat like the guy that was a perennial MVP candidate a few years ago with Florida. And he's happy in L.A., and he's happy playing shortstop. He did not want to move to third. Good pitch by Ottavino, and he strikes out Hanley Ramirez. Second strikeout for Ottavino. Andre Ethier will come up. The type of slider that he wanted to give Buke to hit, not giving this. That was a good slider. Hanley Ramirez punched him out. Second out of the inning. Two and zero on Ethier. Three and Ethier draws a walk. That'll allow Kemp to hit here in the seventh. Five nothing L.A. Check it six nothing L.A. Sign up your kids today for the 2013 Rockies Rookies Kids Fan Club. The official membership package includes great gifts and benefits with a carnival and a pregame parade all on July 27th. So make sure you go to Rockies.com. Find out more information about the Kids Fan Club here with the Rockies. I mean, you were talking about the most talented players in the game. Matt Kemp's name was right near the top of the list and if Matt's healthy it, it probably will remain there. 6 4 and about 225 pounds. And as big a man as Matt is, the 22 year old Puig, 25 pounds heavier. Just having fun playing a little ball. Runner going and Ethier is safe at second, stolen base. Three doesn't steal many. For Ethier, his second of the year. Got the right jump, got a big jump, and then just Got in there right ahead of the throw of what was going on. And, and, and again, when you slide to that outfield side, see, he takes it. The, the foot to the back corner. To help give him somewhat of an advantage. Two and two on Kemp. Matt last year. Played in 106 games, had hamstring injuries, batted 303 with 23 home runs. The year prior, 324, 39 jacks, 126 driven in. But he's stuck on two home runs right now. He's had shoulder injuries. He's running into the wall, Georgie. 
Hasn't been the same offensively. Not even close. Kemp this year has been limited to 57 games. Oh, for three tonight. Here's the three-two from Adavino, and he's got him. So Adavino strikes out Matt Kemp in the inning. Yasiel Puig hits a home run to dead center field. His eighth of the year, and it's six to nothing, Dodgers. Up six to nothing. Bottom of the seventh inning upcoming. What's next is brought to you by CenturyLink. The pitching matchup tomorrow. It'll be Zach Granke making his 12th start of the year. He's five and two. Tyler Chatwood will make his 10th start in his last eight. He's given up two runs or less in each one of his last eight. A 2.13 ERA. So Chatwood and Granke tomorrow on a Wednesday night at Coors Field. Nolan Arenado line drive to left. And a foul out down the right field line that Puig made a marvelous catch on, running full speed. Then somehow made the catch, didn't run into the wall. I'm telling you what, George, this play was so impressive. He made down the right field line. You well, talk Ron, about 245 pounds in body control. Look at this. Up, oh, got the ball. It's like I'm staying in bounds, running down the sideline. Yeah, and even the umpire had to stand and look and said, "Yeah, the ball in your glove." He ran by. Could I see it, please? I mean, he ran 40 yards just to get in the neighborhood. One and two. Arenado behind. I think this where Nolan has grown as a major league hitter with two strikes. And he's gone. Yeah, he's going to get rang up there. Looked like he might have stopped his wrist, but apparently not by Tim Timmons' judgment. That's six strikeouts. Yeah, you look at back at Kershaw's starts, George. He described this curveball. Very good hammer. I mean, it is in the dirt. Not going to be called, obviously. Nolan tried to get his hands stopped before they went through the zone, thinking fastball. But uh, you can see there on that chart, there's not a lot of pitches in the strike zone that were swung at, including that one. But what I started to say about Nolan's growth as a big league player, uh, not chasing a lot of pitches out of the zone. The amazing thing about Kershaw, even with really good pitchers, top flight pitchers, they'll, you know, George, every once in a while they'll have a a kick up start, you know, a, a start where they get roughed up a little bit. He doesn't have any of those. I mean, he's had a couple where he gave up four runs. I mean, that's like. It's a ton. That's like giving up 15 for him. Yeah. It, it, it's he remarkable. never does that. 
O2 Cal. Drafted out of Highland Park High School in the Dallas area. He's in that 06 draft. And he didn't hang around the minor leagues very long. First 10,000 July 23rd are going to receive a coupon good for a Hebrew national hot dog. Make sure you get your tickets now for that ball game as the uh, Miami club will be in town. Pretty good young talent there, particularly one of their starting pitchers named Fernandez. He's awesome. Some of your hot dogs. Georgia, he made just 44 starts in the minor leagues. A big strong kid coming out. There's something else in high school. He's had like five no hitters or something. It was crazy. It's almost like Shelby Miller when he came out of high school. Miami's starting to play a lot better baseball. They're 15 and 10 in the month of June. It just after the uh, Giants. Held with a base hit to center field. He went down and got that curveball. Fourth hit for the Rockies. Tori Alba has two. LeBay who has the other one. You're right about Todd going up and taking that swing. We've seen that one-handed follow-through swing from Todd Elton over the course of the years, but that flexibility in the body much better on that swing, much athletic, much more athletic swing. Well, why not? Top 102 will end up uh, a little bit in that top 100 all-time hit leaders. Six from being in the top 100, surpassing. The big hurt, Frank Thomas. Here's Tori Alba. I think Kershaw just walk him now, right? After those two singles. Why not? This question tonight in an interview, George, putting together your all time 20th anniversary team. We did that earlier this year on Ruth. But I voted for Tori Alba behind the plate. Because if you look at the Rockies, two of the three times they went to the postseason, he was behind the plate. He moved in front of Chris Ionetta late. In both seasons, to well, he's become the, one, the everyday guy. He's the one guy that has held down the position over a period of time. Where uh, that, that position, for whatever reason, he just didn't have a lot of catchers stick around there at second base. One and two on your V. Six nothing, LA. Helton at first. Ground ball to short. There's one and there's two. Dodgers turn it over 6 4 3. As we go to inning number eight, it's 6 0 Los Angeles.
Sports, brought to you by McDonald's. Now get a coffee, sausage, McMuffin, or half brown for only one dollar on the dollar menu at breakfast. I'm loving it. Adrian Gonzalez got a high fastball and hit a two-run home run against Roy Oswald. That made it four nothing in the fourth inning. Juan Arribe with another base hit up the middle. He had one earlier to drive in a run. This will drive in AJ Ellis. And then Yasiel Puig, his third hit of the ball game. He's now a triple shot of the cycle. A home run to center field. And here's A.J. Ellis against Adam Adovino. Third inning of work for Adovino. Roy Oswalt his third start again. Not uh, what he was looking for. Five innings, five runs, nine hits, a walk, and four strikeouts. So in 16 innings, he's allowed 27 hits. This ball's hit well off the right center field wall. Colvin firing it in. And it'll be a double for A.J. Ellis. Ellis, two doubles, two walks. Rockies have yet to retire him. Yeah, he's been able to hit that ball to right field and do a good job with it. Handle the game with Kershaw. Here's the in-game box score. It's brought to you by Subway. Not much to show on the Rockies side of things. Plenty offensively for the Dodgers. They have 11 hits in the ball game. And Arebe, who's at the plate, has two of them. And as we mentioned, a couple of RBIs. There were many who followed the Dodgers that thought that L.A. would eat the final year of his contract and just release him. They had so many injuries, they did not. And early on, Arebe was one of their better offensive players. And you, know, you look at his numbers, George, he's hitting a very respectable 273. And he played a solid third base, too. And the guy they did release is the guy they thought was going to start there, Luis Cruz, who had a good second half last year. They penciled him as, in as a starter at third, and he went the other direction. And the veteran Juan Arebe showing there was still something left in the tank after a disappointing season a year ago. Adovino with the 0-2 pitch. It's popped up. And playable for Arenado. Foul ground. Bring up Clayton Kershaw. You know, when he pitches, the other thing that happens is the bullpen gets a night off. Typically, he's going to work into the seventh or eighth inning every time. Speaking of helping out the bullpen, that's what Adam Adovino is doing right now. Edgemar Escalona is now in the bullpen available for the Rockies activated today for the disabled list. He had a sore elbow. Through an inning in the third in Colorado Springs the other day, 93-96 <clears throat> with his fastball. Excuse me. Slowly hit the short by Kershaw. Going to get up the line. Spelling a hit. He was out by half a step. I'll take another look at this. You're talking about hustling up the line. Just beat it by half a step. Man. Dodgers now three for 13 with runners in scoring position. The Rockies only had two chances. 0 for 2. Yeah, 13 a bunch in a game. Three for 13, not what you're looking for, but the Dodgers are up 6 0. They had 18 such opportunities in their 6 1 victory on Sunday against the Phils. They were 6 for 18. As a club, they're hitting just under 300 the last couple of weeks with runners in scoring position. Picked it up offensively, and their rotation has been solid. In fact, their rotation. Has an ERA at 352, which is fifth best in baseball, despite losing Billingsley. Having Steven Fife now working down there. He's done a good job out, out of their rotation. Seven starts, three and two, with an earned run average of 2.83. The opposition hitting just 262 against him. Juan 
One and one on Mark Ellis. And Mark with a base hit to drive in the seventh Dodger run. A.J. Ellis scores for the second time. That's the first knock for Mark Ellis, his 21st RBI. And he's starting to get that the pitch limit on a guy working two and three innings. Now to Vino, two series, 45th pitch on that base hit. Here's Puig, three for four. And then he does a pirouette swinging at that slot. You saw the home run a few moments ago. He hit against Ottavino last inning, leading off. He had four hits on Sunday. It's hard to come in with a 436 average and see it go up. <laughs> yeah. That's another strike. Been a while since Ottavino threw a baseball. He's going to get the last one out on the here. He threw 56 pitches on June 25th. Been a while. He gets a little bit of revenge as he punches out quick here. 7 0 LA. Off, then we'll get a pinch hitter. Clayton Kershaw still out there. Rockies fans, the ultimate fan in Wyoming or Idaho contest ends today. Go vote for your favorite fan photos on the Root Sports Facebook page at facebook.com slash rootsportsrm and click on the ultimate fan tab. Next pitch, just the 90th for Kurt Kershaw. And this ball's in the air to right center field. And Pui casually moves over and makes the catch. Corey Dickerson will bat against Kershaw. Rockies have three players left on their bench. Dickerson, Herrera, and Rosario. May very well get a start tomorrow. Yeah, Against the right hander Granky, so probably thinking with Walt Weiss. Let's give the kid an at bat here. Late in this ball game. Let's see what he can do against the great Clayton Kershaw.
challenge with the fastball early is what he's going to get, and he does. And it's a 92 mile an hour heater. Visit visit your local dugout stores for all things Rockies. Get discounted tickets with every twenty dollar merchandise purchase. Also check out the great gift with purchase opportunities. So check out your dugout stores. 303-832 team for more information. One of my favorite lines on pitching was uttered by Tim McCarver in describing his friend and teammate Bob Gibson. He said he's the luckiest pitcher I ever saw. Always pitched on the days the other team didn't score any runs. Amazing how that works, isn't it? Kind of the way this guy goes. When they do it, ain't many. Two. <laughs> and that's going to go down. 208 ERA coming in third sure. best in the National League and 1.96 right now. One two on Dickerson. Mitch Escalona up. Apparently he'll throw the ninth inning. Well I like this guy's makeup Dickerson. Good hard nosed player signed out of junior college and then climbed very quickly through the Rockies organization signed by Damon Ionella. Damon now. As, uh, Dickerson strikes out national cross checker. Damon signed a lot of talent. Two outs DJ LeMay who one for three will come up. Seven strikeouts for Kershaw. Who wants tacos fans if you'd like to receive text message alerts when the Rockies score seven in a game for the Rockies taco special. The word to text is taco and text it to 720720. When that does occur Taco Bell and Root Sports will donate two hundred fifty dollars to the Colorado I have a dream foundation. And that was a hard slider on the back foot. Looking fastball middle half in DJ with a base hit in the ball game got a slider. Once you start that commit that swing you want to try to look as graceful as you can on a swing and miss. Pretty good play in the Dodger dugout Looks like Van Slyke make the snag. Yeah big Scott Van Slyke. To short Ramirez. And Kershaw makes quick work of the Rockies in the eighth inning. Seven nothing LA. Southwest Airlines find our fares online only at southwest.com. Rockies trailing in the ninth inning, seven to nothing to play with Kershaw and the resurgent Dodgers. Let's go to our center field stage and check in with our host for the Toyota Post Game Show, Mark Stout. Mark. Indeed, Drew, when you see that score, it means we're going to be talking a lot about LA. And we'll start with Kershaw Redemption. Clayton Kershaw hadn't won a game here at Coors Field since May 30th of 2010. He is working on a complete game shutout. Second, in a Puig of his own. First time to see the rookie Yasiel Puig here at Coors Field. 
shocked and disappointed a homer has a single and a double. Don't think he's going to get to the cycle but that's okay with us. It's all coming up on the Toyota post game show as the Rockies boy having a tough one here against the Dodgers. Just go back up to the booth and Drew and George guys. You couldn't come up with a film for Walt Weiss's press conference. Now nah, we didn't we didn't think of that one too quick. Plus the Kadire thing too is on the on the line as well his hit streak so. It is on the line. He will come up in the ninth inning. He got a hit in his final at bat on Sunday to keep the hitting streak alive. 0 for 3 tonight. Adrian Gonzalez, Hanley Ramirez, Andre Ethier against Edgemar Escalona in the ninth. Great crowd, 37,419. In this first of three between Colorado and LA. Escalona off the DL earlier today, 21 ball games. An ERA of 418. When he's right, he has uh, nasty stuff. Rockies put the shift on three on the right side for Adrian Gonzalez, a two run home run, also a single. He's two for four this evening. Escalona. At 95 touches the strike zone. Dexter Fowler, if you missed it, was placed on the DL with a hand injury. They hope uh, he'll be ready to go on July the 11th. That's the date he can come off. It's retroactive to last week. Sharply hit the short. Rutledge will throw out Gonzalez. One gone. It's a 6 3 put out. And that'll bring up Hanley Ramirez, a single and a run scored the second. Hanley's one for four, has a 13 game hitting streak in which he's hit close to 500. And if you're looking and saying, wait, is that graphic, as we call it in the business in the lower third, right? He's hitting 380. It is right because Hanley's missed so many games this year with injuries. So he doesn't have a, a ton of at bats. That's why he has the gaudy average right now. Ramirez with just 79 at bats. Tonight is 27th game. A career four 22 hitter at Coors Field. Liking the limelight of a team and climbing the top, being a major part of this. And am I seeing you tweeting over there on your computer? You are, aren't you? Or is that Facebooking? Which one is that? That's uh, th that would be uh, this is that particular instant page messaging is Twitter. Or, uh, no, I don't do instant. What is that? Instagram? I don't do Instagram. I don't do Facebook either. That's outside three and up. Oh. these computers are special things, man. You gotta. I got one right over here. It's called your phone. No, it's right there. See that oh, right that's there. right. You that's got right. that. You, you, I forgot you added your iPad this year. Got you into the 21st century. Welcome. Great. It's been a great ride. <laughs> <laughs> Three and one on Hanley. See, you were talking about fingers, George. And yeah, Hanley's he's got the fingers. long ones. Yeah, he's got, he's got, well, Escalona is a big man. He's got strong hands. And, you, know, you, you always look. The shoulders to see how guy you know I like big at broad potential shoulders. velocity. Yep, I like big broad shoulders, wide, hard throwers, hands. I mean, it's just uh, Escalano. I've watched him since 2007 in Casper. He's always been a guy that threw hard. Always been a guy working out of the bullpen. Three and two on Hanley Ramirez, and the heater at 96 is drilled to the gap in right center field. It'll run all the way to the wall. Colvin. Fire it in, and Ramirez has a double. And talking to Steve Lyons today, Psycho, you know, the Dodgers is broadcaster for a while now, is saying Hanley Ramirez is hitting the ball consistently to right center field, which he did when things were right for him in a Marlins uniform. In the heydays, that's exactly right. This was a guy that. Could really drive the ball with authority to right center field, much bigger and stronger now. And he got right on top of the fastball from Escalona and drove it into right center field. You don't win a batting title as he did just being a pull hitter. No. 
Well, eighth year has swung the bat decent in this first game. He drove in a score to run back in the second inning with a base hit, a ground out, strikeout, and a walk. He's had to move around defensively because Puig's now playing right field. Kemp was down for a while. He was playing center. Crawford's still out, so now he's in left field. At Arizona State, where he was a big star, he played center field. Like a lot of players on their ball club with runners in scoring position, they've struggled. Neath here, just 200 average before in his career, well into the high twos. The big news in baseball tonight Homer Bailey, no hit the San Francisco Giants. He was a walk short of throwing a perfecto at Great American Ballpark tonight. His second no hitter. He threw one. Late September last season, and here he is getting the 27th out. On the ground to third for Frazier. He did it! Oh, oh he moves! Homer Bailey, second career no hitter. You heard them say second, so he knows what it feels like. This is Luke to left. That's a base hit. Ramirez will score the eighth Dodger run. Ethier with his 25th RBI. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority. The Colorado Rockies may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Colorado Rockies. You know, another thing happened in baseball today. It's gone a little bit unnoticed. Scott Feldman of the Cubs traded to the Baltimore Orioles. He was one of those trade pieces out there being talked about by an awful lot of ball clubs that they would like to try to acquire. Well, they did. The Baltimore Orioles picked him up. They have former Rocky Pedro Strope back in his in return, along with. Arietta, I believe, is how you pronounce his name, a hard throwing right hander. Won 10 games a couple of years ago. That's an uncomfortable feeling. Matt can't, you know, get ready yet. Dial it up pretty early if you want to hit 95, 96. And his his body, his face was exposed to a pitch up and in. Well, once you start that stride forward, I mean, that's not, it, it's just kind of chest high, hard heat. Once you start lift this front leg up right here and start forward, it's difficult to redirect your body when you're as big as Kemp is. One and two. Fourteen hits for the Dodgers, just four for the Rockies. Eight nothing LA. And that's a slider that's away. Kemp so for four. He did have a ribby in his first at bat on a fielder's choice ground ball to Nolan Arenado. Fly ball deep center field. Colvin back to the wall will make the catch. Probably wondering am I ever going to hit a home run again? This guy, tremendous pop, has just two home runs. He could start doing that when he gets to the next city. Now, Alice obviously uh, has done a lot tonight swinging the bat, a walk, a couple of hits, two doubles, walked a, another time, so two for two so far. One to know on AJ Ellis.
AJ's perfect tonight. Two doubles, two walks. And another opportunity for Colvin. We'll go to the bottom of the ninth inning. The Rockies trail eight to nothing. Michael Kadire will hit third in the inning. He's 0 for 3. His 27th game hit streak on the line. Trying to keep his hitting streak alive. It's at 27 games. Clayton Kershaw has been magnificent tonight. He's allowed the Rockies just four singles. Two by Tori Alba, one by LeMahieu, one by Helton. Josh Rutledge, Cargo, and Kadire. Eight pitches through eight innings for Kershaw. First pitch in there for a strike. Brandon League in case Kershaw needs help. And this will be an easy out. Ramirez drop steps into short left center, one out. Two more days to vote. You have to 10 Mountain Standard Time on July the 4th to vote for the All Star Game. Cargo right now sitting among the top three of outfielders in the National League, second behind Carlos Beltran and ahead of Justin Upton. Michael Kadire, amazingly, not in the top 15 among outfielders. 0-1 on cargo, a line out, two strikeouts tonight. Heads up, look at it. What what is going on tonight with cargo and holding on to the bat? More than one person trying to grab that out of his hands too. That guy got some strong hands right there. This is the third time he's lost control of the yeah. bat. Bottom hand coming off, top hand trying to hang on to it. Man, lucky here. I'm glad those fans over there are paying attention. One guy took a pretty good rip shot there. And Kershaw. Strikes out Gonzalez for the third time. And now here comes Michael Kadai. Crowd of more than 37,000. Most disappointed, obviously, in, in the score. But they could make 
the evening a little more palatable if Kadire could get a knock here. It's two fourth at bat base hits on Sunday in his final at bat. He got a base hit. Here's the 0-1. One ball, one strike. He's put it in play three times against Kershaw. Bounce to the left side twice and a fly ball to center field. The 1-1. One, one. Trust me, he wants to swing the bat, folks. You now you hear guys booing a little bit in the background. He did want to hit to get on. Walks it's over. And he took a pretty wicked hack at that fastball, and it's two and two. it in the air to right, but Puig has a play, he's got the baseball, and Kadire's hit streak will end at 27 games, and the Dodgers and Clayton Kershaw have shut out the Rockies 8 to nothing in this first of three. It's the seventh career shutout for Kershaw, his second this year, which now ties him with Adam Wainwright as the only two National Leaguers with two shutouts. Roy Oswald takes the loss. He's 0 and 3 so far in a Rockies uniform. It's the sixth time the Rockies, by the way, have been shut out this season. Tonight's Jimmy John's Freaky Fast Delivery. The game is brought to you by Jimmy John's. And as good as Yasio Puig is, was tonight, you have to uh, tip your cap to Clayton Kershaw, who in just uh, a little more than 100 pitches shuts out the Rockies. He allowed just four singles tonight. See again why he is one of the premier pitchers in the game. Visit JimmyJohns.com to find a location near you. The Dodgers improved to 39 and 43. The Rockies fall to 41 and 43. The Dodgers eight, the Rockies nothing. Stick around. The Toyota Post Game Show is up next for Coors Field.